The latest thing to be linked with Papa Rose is another goalkeeper. Do we actually need three or will one be going out the door? We're going to take a look at that and more next. That's right, folks. Pat Moss came with another video. Today, we're taking a look at, of course, a new transfer name in the mix. Of course, a new goalkeeper to maybe compete with Kaminsky or Pears, or maybe even all three all three of them combined fighting for the jersey. We'll take a little look at it in just a second. If you're new, where you've been, smash your subscribe and bang. All things Rovers related, transfers related, world football related. We got it all here, boys. Under one, Ruski. That's right, the latest name coming out of the hat is a goalkeeper coming at you from League Two. Who is it? Of course, we'll reveal in just a second. Of course, people shout out to my VIPs. They are the patrons, of course. You know who you are. But let's jump in. Let's not keep you into, in suspenders too much longer. I am talking about this guy. It is, uh, what is his name? It is Nick Tanzayev. That's right. Currently on the books of Wimbledon. Uh, this is coming at you from the uh, London News Online. South London Press originally burst the bubble on this bad boy, uh, saying that Wimbledon, AFC Wimbledon's uh, current number one, uh, is expected to leave the club and Rovers are uh, an option for the goalkeeper. So who is he? Well, that's what we're going to try and find out right here, right now. Um, as we look to see what's going on here, he is a uh, fresh-faced Bambino right there. Of course, Kiwi. He is a Kiwi. We'll, we'll elaborate on that in a minute. Uh, but of course, who is he? Uh, I think I'm going to have to slide over here a little bit. Let me just move over because I think I prepped this to, for, to be all over there. So... It is uh, Nikola Chiradov Tentayev, of course, coming at you from Wellington, down under. That's right, not near Australia, but New Zealand. Uh, he's a goalkeeper, of course, currently in the books at Wimbledon. His contract does expire in 2024. The club do have an option for a year, but I believe that something's gone on with that. So it, that gives Rovers the ability to, to have a chat with Nikola Tentayev. Of course, and again, I might be butchering his name. I do apologise if I am. 1.95 metres tall. He's 26 years of age. Good age for a keeper. And he has been, he's been around a while, uh, of course, for, for goalkeepers. And we'll elaborate on that right here, right now. Of course, uh, this season, though, 39 times he's played for the Dons, the real Dons. He has conceded 50 goals, though, but 13 clean sheets out in League 2. And a team that did, of course... Were relegated from League One down to League Two. They were not really in any discussions for playoffs this campaign. He was in the starting eleven eighty-five percent of the time. Played eighty-five percent of the minutes for for the Dons. Uh, third, just shy of thirty percent success rate with penalty saves. So uh, take from that from what you will. Here he is, man, man and all for the Kiwis. Uh, I think he's got that one cap. We'll reveal that in a second, uh, of course. But this is his glittering career so far. Been up and down the Football League, uh, both with Sutton United and Wimbledon. Played some National League uh, games there. Uh, 19 uh, games, 17 goals conceded. He played out in uh, in League One for the, for the Dons, I would imagine. 63 games, 95 conceded. Um, uh, is that penalties conceded? Let me know about that. Can't be 29 penalties conceded. Uh, regardless of all that. Um, League 2, 39 times, 50 goals conceded. So he's, he's an experienced keeper, definitely within the mould of reserve team keeper. And that's the scenario we find ourselves in uh, today as, as Blackburn Rowers fans. We ended the season with Ainsley Pairs between the sticks. Kaminsky, of course, started off at the number one. A big, humongous discussion is going on now within the fans, within maybe the infrastructure at Ewa Park, uh, as who will be the number one heading into next season. And of course, if you do uh, explore some of the other media out there, there's an interview with Greg Broughton highlighting the fact that if we are going to buy, we're going to have to sell. Um, and of course... If you've got two similar standard goalkeepers, and again, you, you can look at the goalkeepers any which way you like and, and say they are maybe they're not similar at all. Maybe you prefer one to the other. I, for, for me, my own personal point of view, Kaminsky, I'm a Kaminsky man. If we're going to say who is the better keeper, I would say Thomas Kaminsky. But who is the more likely to generate some income? Again, I would say Thomas Kaminsky. So if we are looking for a business sense of, th sense of things, then Kaminsky would be the one to sell. Uh, and of course, pin your hopes on a pair, Ainsley Pears keeper who you know had good moments. I wouldn't say there was moments where he was he was uh, really good form, but I think that kind of dwindled to the water back end of it. You do need another uh, uh, an experienced keeper to push whoever is going to be your number one if you are going to go down that road. This guy here, if he is actually going to come into Blackburn Rovers, will not be here to play third fiddle. He will be here to compete for that number one jersey and compete. Uh, but but we'll start. 
just like Ainsley Pears did last season as reserve. So, you know, we had that Greek wonder kid for a little bit. Um, you know, we've always, we, we seem to always have names on our books for goalkeepers. And uh, it's not been, you know, Kaminsky came in uh, at a period where we, we struggled to have uh, a, a, a decent goalkeeper and we've had not had it since David Raya you know we've gone through some dog shit Christian Walton Jason Steele who's now seems to be number one at Brighton uh, we've gone through some real dog shit for goalkeepers I'm not saying I'm not going to say that this kid is, is this, this kid's the answer to our uh, our our long term problems I don't think so I think he will he will he will be a good deputy uh, for Ainsley Pears if that's the case which I believe we are going to be going uh, like I said not like a set but like I said uh, he has played play for the Kiwis or the All Blacks or All Whites uh, as they call them in, in the football uh, just the one time for New Zealand back in 2018 it's been a while since he's played for them I, th- I don't know who is the number one goalkeeper uh, one for the fans of course let's take a look at, look, look at him comparing him to what I imagine will be his competition that will be Ainsley Pears he's actually a year older than Pears 10 seconds centimetres taller than him um, and of course been at this current club since 2016 uh, his contract is like I said uh, not like I said but like I said still uh, till 2024 20, but I believe there is there is um, uh, some uh, wiggle room within all that to kind of make a deal happen um, again goalkeepers between the two the values of course he's been steady Eddie ever since he's uh, uh, popped into into English football with his time at Wimbledon and Sutton United uh, as for pairs of course he's, he's peaked at a million but now he's probably around about 500,000 I don't know about that. I think it might be a little bit harsh on pairs. I think he's probably back towards the million, million. And that's quite a, a stark reality of what we're looking at in, in regards to goalkeepers. We're not talking about the tens of 15 million pounds rated goalkeepers. We're not talking about the David Ryers of the world who, are, of course, hoping to go for 30 or 40 million pounds. Um, so uh, we are looking at uh, the, the, the bargain bucket, the dollar store, the pound store, uh, whatever you want to call it. For the goalkeepers, I'm not, again, I don't want to label these guys as, as pound store knockoffs, but they are. But let's t- compare the two there. Nikola Zanev against Thomas Kaminsky. Again, taller. He's taller than Kaminsky. And that, for me, is, is a key stat. Uh, height is massive when it comes to goalkeepers. Uh, and again, uh, age-wise, he's four years younger than Kaminsky. Kaminsky is, of course, probably in the in the peak of his career right now as uh, as goalkeeper. And again, he's been Belgium's number three for a while. And he ain't going to get Belgium's number one staying in the championship. So he has bigger aspirations, and maybe he's looking at at a, at a Luton or or a Coventry or something like that, uh, or a team that's about to, you know about to get into the Premier League, or a team uh, maybe as a backup for a team in the Premier League like a Brighton. Uh, or something like that. So Thomas Kaminsky has got to, if that's the way we're going, and I believe that's the way we're going to go, because because Pears just signed a new deal. If we're not going, we're not stupid. We're not stupid. He's not going to sign a deal and sell him. If we're going to if we're going to bring in a goalkeeper, it means Kaminsky's time is up, and it's not due to how poor he is, but just like Bradley Dack. Sensib- sensibility has to come through. We've got to we've got to balance the books. And Kaminsky, I'm sure, is one of the higher earners, uh, just like Bradley Dack was one of the higher earners. In, and and uh, but playing playing bench, he was on the bench, and um, you're not going to do that. You've got to be wise. You've got to be cutthroat. Uh, and Kaminsky wants games. So does Dak. So does uh, Ayala. All these high earning players, you know. And you've got to, if you are going to be the number one, or if you're going to be starting, you've got to be delivering week in, week out. And that's what I want. I've always wanted competition for places, whether it is at goalkeeper, whether it is at right back, left back. I don't want, uh, you know, um, Pickering thinking he's guaranteed to be left back. I want him to be looking over his shoulder, fighting for that jersey, fighting the start, fighting for minutes. Uh, and the same can be said for goalkeeper. Right now, uh, it looks like Pears will be number one. And then, of course, there will be a, a vacancy for number two. Will it be Tanev? Will it be somebody else? There's also a little bit of a bumble out there for a player that we were linked with way back when. Again, the values, of course, Kaminsky has been uh, uh, you know peaking around about three million. Uh, hopefully, we can get around about that. And then, of course, uh, the youngster or the, uh, the Kiwi there. Um, steady Eddie around about couple hundred grand. So it, it shouldn't be too hard to, to finance that move. But that's my take on it. Do I think it'll happen? I, I, th- I think there's something in there um, because I, I think we need a keeper. 
whether it is this the player that was a, a formerly of a Bodo Glimit, of course he went to Bristol City, then went back to Bodo Glimit. There is potential. There's there's a there's a there's a bubble out there about that. I've not seen any legitimate sources. It's more of a of a of a whisper. Um, so I don't know if that's going to happen. But I do think there is legs in this, uh, and of course with those legs he should be prepared to be back up. And hopefully the 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 temptation of playing, you know, of looking at Ainsley pairs as a as a as a blueprint, you know, come in as backup. You never know. You might force your way into number one. Uh, he's tall. He's lanky. That's just what you need for a goalkeeper. And for me, uh, this one ticks the boxes if we are going to sell Kaminsky, which I believe is what's going to happen. That's what I think. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, all that kind of jazz. And of course, subscribe for the latest Blackman Rovers rumours coming at you right here, right now.